Hey guys, my name is Miss Kavara and I teach high school English. Today we're going to be talking to you about the five keys to understanding To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. To Kill a Mockingbird is set in the 1930s in the small, racially divided town of Macom, Alabama. The novel centers on the clever, tomboyish scout and her older brother, Jem, and their widowed father, Atticus Finch, who's an attorney. The Finch household also includes Calpurnia, a black woman who cooks for them and watches over the kids. In the first part of the book, Scout, Jem, and their friend Dill obsess over Boo Radley, a mysterious neighbor who never leaves his house. The kids spend the summer inventing crazy stories and games about Boo, but they're forced to stop when Atticus catches them and gives them a stern lecture, saying that he doesn't want to see them bothering Boo again. The story shifts when Atticus agrees to defend Tom Robinson, a black man falsely accused of raping a white woman. Through Tom's trial, Scout comes face to face with prejudice, injustice, and violence. Although clearly innocent, Tom is found guilty by a racist jury and is later killed when he tries to escape custody. This event forces Scout to confront the racism and prejudice in her community. But even though she witnesses humanity's inherent evil, her interactions with Boo in the second half of the novel allow her to see the good in people and to understand the importance of extending compassion to those who need it the most. first sentence of the novel, Scout says that Jem broke his arm. She starts to explain what happened, but then she says she needs to go back and provide the necessary context in order for the story to make sense. The rest of the novel is the background context for Jem's broken arm. At the end of the novel, Bob Ewell, who was humiliated as a result of Atticus's defense of Tom Robinson, attacks Jem and Scout on their way home from the Halloween pageant. Jem breaks his arm in the struggle. The story of the broken arm serves as a narrative device, bookending the entire novel with scouts telling the story. While initially the reader might assume that Jem broke his arm through innocent childhood games, by the end of the novel, we understand the darker, more complicated truth behind the accident. The protagonist is a character who drives the action of the novel and who changes over the course of the story. If you were asked to identify the protagonist of To Kill a Mockingbird, how would you respond? Take a second to think about your answer. Did you choose Scout? She's the most obvious choice of the protagonist, but if you chose Atticus instead, you aren't wrong. Strong cases can be made for both Scout and Atticus as the protagonist of the story. Scout makes many choices that drive the action, such as spying on Boo Radley and later confronting the men who form a lynch mob outside Tom Robinson's jail cell. Throughout the book, Scout transforms from a naive, judgmental kid to a more mature young woman who can empathize with others. Both of these factors make her a good candidate for the protagonist. Now let's look at Atticus. The decision Atticus makes to defend Tom Robinson incites the central action of the book and drives the plot. Atticus remains a wise and caring father from beginning to end. However, Scout and Jem's perception of Atticus changes over the novel. They start out thinking of him as dry and kind of boring, but after watching him defend Tom Robinson, they recognize how courageous he is and they truly respect and admire him. In these ways, Atticus can also be described as the protagonist. two lies at the heart of To Kill a Mockingbird. The first lie destroys an innocent man. The second lie prevents the destruction of an innocent man. Taken together, the two lies reflect how deception can be used to harm or protect. Social status also determines who is allowed to tell a lie in the novel. During the trial, the prosecutor asks Tom if he is accusing Mayella of lying. Even though Tom knows that Mayella is lying, 
He cannot say so because he is black and Maela is white. Atticus, on the other hand, who is white, male, and of a higher class status than Maela, can accuse her of lying when he suggests that it was really Maela's father, not Tom, who beat her. Calpurnia, a black woman who works for the Finches, is the closest thing Scout has to a mother. While Scout describes her as a strict, demanding, and unsentimental, tyrannical presence, she also treats Calpurnia with more genuine respect and obedience than she treats the female members of her own family, such as her Aunt Alexandra. To modern readers, Calpurnia may seem like the all-too-familiar variation of the stereotype of the contented slave. In fact, all the black characters in the novel seem at least primarily to serve as props for the stories of the white characters that surround them. To Kill a Mockingbird is a novel filled with simplified characters, so it may be unfair to single out Calpurnia for not representing the complexities of her circumstances. But in a novel so interested in the issue of racism, the treatment of Calpurnia is worthy of critical exploration. We've talked about five keys to understanding To Kill a Mockingbird, and we've shown you where to go in the Sparknotes Literature Guide to find in-depth analyses, plot summaries, and tons of other information about the novel. Our literature guides can help if you're doing research for an essay, studying for an exam, or trying to get a better grasp on a reading assignment, whether that's for To Kill a Mockingbird or any of the more than 500 literature titles at Sparknotes. Make sure you're taking advantage of all the great and free features that sparknotes.com has to offer.